No, no, really, friends, you're too much. You're too much. All right, guys, we got a great show today. We're going to be talking about gentle answers versus harsh words. Gentle answers versus harsh words. This is based off of the verse in Proverbs 15, 1, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Friends, this verse is huge. You know what's so amazing about God's word? You can take one statement from it and it can turn people's lives around. It can turn families around. It can turn societies. It can turn nations around. A verse that just popped in my head and uh, what is that? Do, uh, Deuteronomy 28, when it talks about if, you know, if you obey God, you'll be blessed. If you disobey, you'll be cursed. And it says, you know what? If you follow God, you will lend to many nations and borrow from none. And then it says, well, if you disobey, you'll be cursed. You'll borrow from many nations. And that's a verse that could turn this nation around. Uh, but friends, we want to see your family, your marriage, your relationship with your parents, your relationship with your children, siblings, all the way around. We we want you to experience God's blessing. And when it comes to the way we speak with uh, speak to each other, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. So um, if 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 your experience in life is anything like mine, harsh words come easy. Harsh words can be default. Soft answers and gentleness is really what we need more than ever before. Friends, the way you speak to your family either gives life or death, light or darkness, blessing or a curse. And once again, this is between spouses. Man, you want to take your marriage to a new level, make a covenant that you're not going to speak harsh words with each other. Siblings, if you want to turn your heart back to your siblings and get their hearts back and be and be best friends again, the way we speak to each other is huge. Obviously, this is huge in parents to children, and it's also huge in, in uh, children to parents. Hey, children, you are expected to obey God now. It's not like there's a magical age where, okay, you're 18 now. It's time to become a real Christian and obey God. No, you are commanded at the earliest age to honor and obey your parents. And the way you speak is a big deal. Just because you say the right words, children, to your parents doesn't mean, you know, that's why it says obey and and honor. So I asked my children to load the, load the uh, dishwasher, and his words are, yes, sir. But if he says it, well, yes, sir, or yes, sir, that's not honoring, and, 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 and that stirs up anger. Uh, so friends, content matters. Obviously, what you say is important, but today we want to focus on the way you speak. Uh, think about that old adage that we heard growing up on the playground, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Guess what? That's a lie. In my counseling with people, I found that words often do more damage than sticks and stones, uh, that, uh, emotional and verbal abuse can be worse in, in, in some cases than the physical. Obviously <laughs> we don't want the physical either, but, but, but friends, words are a big deal. Now, is there a time to be stern? Because, you know, one of the pushbacks is, well, Jared, you know, my dad would look at me and say, don't you do that again. And that really got my attention. Well, yeah, you can be stern. You know, there are there are times uh, my uh, wife just published um, George Washington's 110 rules that he wrote down when he was 13. And, and one of them says that in serious matters, have an expression that's serious and grave and your voice would follow that. And so, you know, we aren't, we aren't just to be a bunch of goofballs, always smiling and talking as such. No, there are grave topics. And, you know, rebuking your children will often carry a voice that matches that. And yet, what does Scripture say? In Proverbs 15, 1, it says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And so that's a big deal, right? That's a, that's a really big deal. Uh, anger can be contagious. This is what it means when it says a harsh word stirs up anger. Think about think about a situation where uh, you know you're hanging out with your family, you're driving somewhere, you're at, you're at a restaurant, you're in the house, wherever it is, and you ask someone a question and they respond harshly. They respond with anger, and you're doing just fine. And yet, it's really easy, man. When someone verbally pokes you, it's really easy to poke back, right? And so you can have five people hanging out. Everything's fine. One person starts the verbal prodding, and the next thing you know, everyone's freaking out. It's chaos. It's a big deal. It's kind of like a very contagious disease, and we want to nip that in the bud. The good news is gentleness and joy can also be contagious. Man, if you want to shut down the enemy... If someone's shouting at you, you know, shouting at you, mad at you, and they're trying to stir you up, 
respond with gentleness and love and it will very often just bring healing. It, 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 it pulls the rug out from the enemy's feet. Friends, think about this. Let me ask you a question. How did God create the heavens and the earth? What did he use? He used his words. I mean, words are, are a big deal. I mean, the name for Christ, one of the main names for Christ is the Logos, the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Uh, words are a big deal. When we speak, we are, we are bringing into existence either life or death, light or darkness. Think about that. Today, you are going to birth, if you will, you are going let you know let's 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 narrow it down to the context of your home you are either going to fill your home with light spiritual light or you're going to fill it with darkness depending on by and large what you say it's a big deal see being made in god's image has consequences he created with his words you also in a sense create with your words you bring light or darkness into your home if you want your home to be filled with light Speak truth and love that's characterized by gentleness and joy and thanksgiving. If you want to bring darkness, yell, scream, be angry, be overly critical, nag, whine, complain. Goodness gracious. That'll bring darkness real quick, folks. It's not a good idea. Now, friends, my challenge to you is not only to put this into practice, but teach it to your children. And when you do, here are the three verses that I think you need to put on the whiteboard in your home or you need to sit down and put to memory with them. This is a really big deal. Man, how cool would it look if one thing our families all got right is the way we spoke to each other? Friends, please don't think that my family has this figured out. This is something we're striving for, we're working on. I'm going to have my children sit down and listen or watch this because it's a big deal. Proverbs 15, 1, once again, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. That needs to be in the minds and on the lips of your children. I mean, this verse gets quoted often. My kids will have an exchange, and I'll say, hey, guys, harsh word, a gentle answer, and they know how the verse goes. The second verse that I think is just very, very powerful is Ephesians 4, 29. It says, let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may give grace or that it may benefit those who hear. Wow. Ephesians 4, 29. I can remember back when I lived in Wisconsin, me and my buddies were holding each other accountable to not saying bad things. And when, when, when someone would do that, we'd all point and say 429. Hey, that's a 429. And we were speaking of this verse. Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. That's the command. There's 1,050 commands in, in the New Testament. This is one of them. Let no corrupt talk, unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only, only what is helpful for building, building others up according to, to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. If what you say is not benefiting, then you shouldn't say it. If what you say is not wholesome, you shouldn't say it. If what you say is not building up, you shouldn't say it. If what you say is tearing down, don't say it. This is the word of God. So you have Proverbs 15.1, uh, you have Ephesians 4.29, and lastly, I love this verse, Psalm 141.3. Psalm 141.3, it says this, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. And this, once again, is a verse that we use with our children. We say, hey, children, what's supposed to be at your mouth? They say a guard. And we'll even pretend to be like, okay, imagine, you know, we'll like look, in a, look at a doorway in, a, in our home and we'll place one of the kids as a guard and say, okay, only let good words through there. Stop bad words. And, you know, we'll, we'll role play and pretend kids, kids love that. It's a really good way. I mean, I think if Christ was here teaching, he would do something like that. And so, hey, do you have a guard set up over your mouth? Are you keeping watch over the door of your lips? Friends, words matter. Teach this to your children. Put it into practice. So practically, here's a personal example. A couple of years ago now, maybe even three years ago now, I sat down with my family and I made a covenant with them and with God that I would not raise my voice. Now, are, are there some hypotheticals 
that might call for that where someone's in trouble and it's a dangerous situation? Yes, of course, but I'm talking about the norm, right? And I said, look, daddy shouldn't raise his voice. I'm sorry, do you forgive me? They say, yes, okay, I'm entering into a covenant with God and you that I'm not gonna do that. I'm purposing before the Lord not to do this. And guess what? It really helped. Now, have I had a perfect track record? No, but it's been a big difference because it's being purposeful about it. You know, it's amazing when you're purposeful about something, how much it improves the situation. For instance, I went to a training one time on memory and they were talking about how to remember people's names. And guess what the first tip is? If you want to remember people's names, if you're anything like me, you meet someone and right away you're like, oh, I forgot your name. Guess what the first tip is on remembering people's names? Going into that encounter purposeful that you're going to remember their name. Okay, I'm going to make it a point. Hi, Jeff. Okay, Jeff, got it. Okay, his name is Jeff. You're thinking about it. You're making a point of it. Well, waking up in the morning with this purpose on your mind, I'm not going to raise my voice. I'm not going to, hey, in closing, let me just challenge you with this. The words you speak are hands exiting your mouth. They're, they're either going to caress your family or they're going to pummel them. Now, by the grace of God, I can tell you that I have never punched my wife or children, but guess what? With my words, I have. I'm ashamed to say. With my words, I have pummeled my wife and children. And I repent from that. And I, and I, and I want the blessing of God and God's word works. So I'm going to answer with soft words. Let no corrupt talk come out of my mouth, but only what benefits my family. And I'm going to set a guard at the door of my mouth. Friends, teach this to your children. It's a big deal. Agree with God and be sanctified. This one issue can make the difference in children following God or not. It's a really big deal. So friends, put God's word into practice and you will be blessed. All right, friends, you can reach out to us, of course, anytime, dodclan7 at gmail.com. Like I think I mentioned last week, we're really trying to improve our YouTube channel. If you want to help us, go on there, subscribe, like, comment on videos. The more you do that, the more it helps us grow our channel, uh, that we can reach more people with the good news of Christ. All right, friends, we'll see you next time. Blessings to you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.